Hi, this is the Revelation of Jesus, episode 58. We are in Revelation chapter 12, verses 13 through 17. Let us pray and jump right in. Father God, thank you, especially for reminding us yesterday that we are overcomers through the blood of the Lamb, Jesus Christ. So cover us with that blood and give us another revelation of Jesus. It is our prayer in your name. Amen. So we are in verse 13. And when the dragon saw that he was cast down to the earth, he persecuted the woman that had given birth to the male child. So let's review. The dragon is who? Yep, the, the, the Satan. Um, persecuted the woman. The woman is God's faithful people, God's true church. We're going to see in Revelation 17 that there's another woman dressed as a prostitute, and that represents the apostate church, the false church. And the male child is Jesus Christ. Okay? So, verse, um, and so he was angry. Now, why was he angry? We learned yesterday the main reason for his anger involved his expulsion from heaven and the transference of his authority and rule over the earth to Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And so, of course, he is angry. And so it says here in verse 14, And two wings of a great eagle were given to the woman, so that she might fly into the wilderness to her place, where she is nourished there for a time, times, and half a time from the presence of the serpent. Now remember, time, times, and half a time, that's 42 months, three and a half years, right? Three and a half days, 1,260 days, 1,260 years, all right? Remember that? And it's interesting because verse 14 is a repetition of verse 6. Look at verse 6. And the woman fled into the wilderness where she had there a place prepared by God so that she might nourish her for 1,260 days. Now, you know what I'm about to say, right? In Jewish thought, they give you the principle it gets repeated, it gets amplified. And so that's what we're seeing right now. And so it says that, um, right? So, 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 it says the main reason, sorry, the woman was carried on two wings of a great eagle. Now, remember the time period is from 538 to 1798 A.D. But now, the reference to the eagle's wings recalls Old Testament text, which says that when Pharaoh was chasing the people of Israel after they had fled Egypt, God carried them on eagle's wings, right? That's Exodus chapter 19, verse 4, Deuteronomy chapter 33, verse 11 and 12. But also, Isaiah, he prophesied that the eagle's wings are associated with the return of Israel from the exile. Isaiah chapter 40 Verse 31, so remember, John is writing to an original audience, seven churches that were very familiar with the Old Testament symbology. So just as God did for Israel in the wilderness and at the time of the exile, so in Revelation chapter 12, he does the same for the woman slash church in the wilderness, protecting her, sustaining her, that she may remain faithful. Now, historicists, this is the the Historicist School of Interpretation, we believe that God's faithful people during the dark Middle Ages had to hide themselves and live in isolated places in order to escape persecution and the torrent of false teaching. So that, that's why I represent the, the church received the two wings to fly into the wilderness and even for 1,260 days. So even though the persecution was happening, God kept the church safe. Amen? And so, continuing reading, it says, And the serpent cast from his mouth like a river after the woman in order to make her flooded by the water. And in my notes it says, The flood-like river proceeding from the serpent's mouth symbolizes two things. First, it symbolizes Satan's effort to destroy the church by physical force and persecution. 
just like the flooding of the war uh, in the Old Testament is a frequent symbol of evil nations attacking and persecuting the people of Israel. That's found in Psalms chapter 69, verse 1 and 2. But also, the flood-like river proceeding from the mouth of the serpent, notice it's not the dragon, it's a serpent, right? Symbolizes Satan's effort to sweep away the church with its deceit and false teaching, right? Because serpent is, 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 is alluding to Genesis chapter 3, when the serpent deceived Eve through his lies. So the, the Bible is teaching us in Revelation that the devil is going to do the same thing again. So he's going to flood uh, the church through his false teaching. And it, it is a two ways, two, two strap to two double attack. It will be a physical force persecution, but it is also false teaching that's going to enter the church during the 1,260 years. And we see that. If you follow church history, you'll see that. So it says here, just as the serpent deceived the first woman, so now Satan attempts to sweep away Christ's people with the flood of deception and false teaching. It says here in verse uh, 16, And the earth helped the woman, and the earth opened its mouth and swallowed the river which the dragon had cast from its mouth. Keep that in the back pocket because this principle is going to get amplified in Revelation chapter 13. But what we're going to learn in chapter 12 is that this is alluding when in the, in, in the Israel wilderness experience, when the earth opened its mouth and swallowed Korah, Dathan, and Abraham because of the rebellion against Moses' authority and leadership. That's in Numbers chapter 16, verse 32, Deuteronomy chapter 11, verse 6. It reminds us of the words from the Song of Moses, how God stretched out his right hand and the earth swallowed the Egyptians pursuing Israel. Exodus 15, 12. So just as in the past, God protected his people from the pursuit of the Pharaoh and Moses from the vicious rebellion of Korah. So now God is going to provide protection for his church from Satan's flooding waters of persecution and false seductive teaching. So now it goes in verse 17. And the dragon was angry at the woman and went away to make war with the remaining ones of her offspring, the ones keeping the commandments of God and having the testimony of Jesus. Satan is frustrated by his constant failure in attempting to destroy Christ. No wonder he's now angry at the woman. One reason for his rage is God's protection over the woman in the, in the wilderness. It is though the church that the kingdom of Christ had been, has been and continues to be manifested. Commentator Oscar Coleman says this, The church is the earthly center from which the full lordship of Christ becomes visible. And Satan has not been able to harm her. Now he faces the remaining ones of her offspring and decides to make war with them. Jesus Christ is the woman's offspring. The expression, the dragon was angry at the woman and his decision to wage war with the remaining ones of her offspring is a strong allusion to the enmity between the serpent and the woman in Genesis chapter 3, verse 15. The remaining ones of the woman's offsprings are the followers of Christ living in the last period of earth's history. Revelation 17 indicates that this woman was once the true church of God's will. During, last, during the end time events, ha she has a negative role. She will eventually turn from her faithfulness to oppose God and his true people. This is why God's people in Revelation are not referred to as the woman, but rather as the remaining ones of the woman's offspring. Think about that. Make, that, make a note of that. They are identified by two definitive characters, the ones that keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus. This is what makes the end time followers of Christ the remnant and separates them from the unfaithful ones. The text indicates that the end time, as the world renders their allegiance and loyalty to Satan and his allies, God will have a people who will unreservedly will, will, will 
will be unreservedly faithful and obedient to keeping his commandments and holding on to the testimony of Jesus given through the gift of prophecy. And we'll pick that up tomorrow. God bless you.